Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Brief. It could be back to quarantine for leading Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Officials confirming that a worker in his office has tested positive for coronavirus. Exactly who the infected person came in contact with is now being investigated. But it is known that just ahead of this Saturday press conference, the premier was in the same room as the worker. If Netanyahu was exposed, this would be his third time entering quarantine since the start of the pandemic. The first time in March, after an aide was infected, and the second in April, when then-Health Minister Yaakov Litzman came down with the virus. Litzman himself had been ignoring his ministry's own regulations. Meanwhile, 98 new coronavirus infections have been recorded in the past 24 hours, this bringing the active infection numbers back to over 2,000 in Israel, the death toll holding at 285. Education centers are the current hotspots for infections, thousands of students sent back into homeschooling over the past week. New Education Minister Yoav Galant ordering every school with an active case to close immediately. Another warning from the health ministry that infection numbers are likely far higher than what's on record after the release of special blood test results in Israel. The serological tests allow scientists to identify who had the virus and also who has the virus and take a look at the results. Some 200,000 Israelis have likely already been infected, over 2.5 percent of the population. That's nearly 12 times the number confirmed by the government. A military boost is ordered across Israel in preparation for potential Palestinian unrest ahead of July 1st. As leading Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu counts the days before that vote on a proposal to annex portions of Judea and Samaria or the West Bank. Defense Minister Benny Gantz ordering Israel's defense forces to step up preparations amidst a recent wave of terror incidents. <laughs> That's when the government will decide whether to extend Israeli sovereignty to settlements and the Jordan Valley, a 30% portion of the area. The fast approaching date prompting a flurry of diplomacy, with top U.S. officials reportedly holding separate conference calls with both Netanyahu and Gantz overnight. Netanyahu, for his part, speaking with Jared Kushner, who played a key role in drafting President Donald Trump's Middle East Peace to Prosperity plan, mulling the best approach. A busy phone line with the White House envoy on Israeli-Palestinian peace and both the U.S. ambassador to Israel and Israel's envoy to the U.S. also on the call. And according to Israeli News Channel 13, due to the current domestic unrest over the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis last week and the economic impact of COVID-19, the Americans are wanting to downplay enthusiasm for an imminent move. Gantz speaking with U.S. ambassador to Israel David Friedman Monday. The blue and white leader's stance, though, is less clear than Netanyahu's. Gantz has endorsed the U.S. plan, but believes annexation should be a coordinated effort with relevant players, like the Palestinians and Jordan. The coalition deal between the two leaders means that as long as Netanyahu can secure a parliamentary majority, the prime minister has the right to proceed even without Gantz's support. <laughs> A peaceful protest in Tel Aviv in contrast to the issues they're shouting about. Thousands rallying along the beachfront calling for government action to end violence against women. Organizers say most of the $71 million approved three years ago for national programs against domestic violence have not yet reached their relevant hands. Eleven women have been killed in Israel since the start of the year, with a rash of murders over the past two-month coronavirus lockdown period. That's all for now, but for more news from Israel, remember to like ILTV on Facebook and on Instagram, and to subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.